Okay, so the first artist we're going to talk about this week is Kara Walker. Um, she's probably the best known artist uh, in this unit and uh, one of the more celebrated artists, uh, c contemporary artists in the sort of larger art world and art market. Um, I'll be just using an example of one of her early uh, installations, um, but I think a, a lot of this, uh, a lot of this critique and questions pervade across her body of work. Uh, and so, if you're interested in her work, I hope this is this is uh, useful. Um, but uh, Kara Walker has sort of become best known for using uh, these um, paper cutouts. Uh, this uh, work that you'll see here. Um, the end of Uncle Tom and the grand allegorical tableau of Eva in Heaven from 1995, uh, cut paper and adhesive on the wall, 10 by 35 feet. So she's working in sort of enormous proportions uh, with these cut paper silhouettes. Um, so that's really the, the sort of key approach here is knowing that these are these are updating uh, and this is where the material uh, question of this is, is coming in at least at the start although there's obviously more to talk about um, is that uh, is the use of the the silhouette this uh, black and white or uh, black on white or white on black um, sharp uh, sharp image um, that sort of flattens all of the characters into uh, into blackness in this case. Um, she does have installations where the walls are black and the figures uh, the figures are white. Of course, that that context itself is important. In this case, we have the the white wall uh, with the black figures. Um, but this doesn't just mean racialized uh, black. Most of the figures, as you sort of scan this image, I want you to look closely at it and think about what you're seeing, because uh, these are uh, often very kind of shocking um, and rather controversial images. Um, but to, just to give you a sense, if you're unfamiliar with, with this sort of silhouette, um, this is an example of a 19th century silhouette. Um, this sort of silhouette portraiture was popular in the 18th and 19th century. Um, these were often private images kept in the home um, to commemorate a, a, an absent figure. Uh, this is present both during, uh, both before photography and even after. This this persists afterwards. Um, but these do become kind of emblems of uh, of power and privilege, uh, and at least a mode of art making that's concurrent with um, with the antebellum South and the uh, and the history of, of course of slavery um, that that rotates uh, around that and sort of finds itself located in this mode of image making to begin with. So this is the mode uh, that uh, that Kara Walker is sort of explicitly taking up in her early work, uh, approaching these two-dimensional images, right? Even though she's using, uh, it's important to know that uh, works like this are shown in sculptural spaces, installations. You saw that in the interview already. So I hope that that gives you a sense of the kind of play of both storytelling, but also of this two dimensionality uh, of these images, these like absolutely flat images that adhere to the wall. Um, a kind of a nod to the history of painting, although I won't won't go into that too much here. Um, but th these have also been taken to to kind of absorb a, a, a psychological flatness. Um, that there's something that's flat about the psychology, or that in some ways, when we read the figures, um, we're not really being given access to their internal lives through uh, through their eyes or their souls or something like that. Right? This is sort of a flat. A psychologically flat way um, of uh, of mediating these images. Now that doesn't mean uh, to be clear that there's no psychology and that there's not a lot going on here uh, in terms of, in terms of that. Um, but I want to briefly quote uh, Kara Walker when she speaks about um, using the silhouette form. Uh, she says, "I've been interested in the way in which black people, or commonly African Americans." or the way at least I responded to or ignored or reaffirmed or reinforced certain stereotypes about myself, other blacks, or more interestingly, white people who retain a sense of white supremacy, blithely unaware of the power black life has over them. The silhouette is the most concise way of summing up a number of interests. It is a way to try and uncover the often subtle and uncomfortable ways racism and racist and sexist stereotypes influence, influence and script our everyday lives. 
I want to call attention to that last uh, that last line that these not only influence but they script um, the everyday life, uh, everyday lives of uh, of both black people and white people, unaware of the power black life has over them. Uh, of course, you can think back here uh, right away. I think to to our day on on France Fanon whose racial historical schema kind of uh, proposes the way that there's there's an imposition on uh, on black subjects by uh, by whiteness um, and that blackness is uh, is sort of the, the counter it is created by whiteness to have a kind of counter position. Um, and so I, I want to think uh, uh, more about this as we go along, uh, but I want to give you a closer look at some of the images here um, to, to speak to, to uh, why uh, these have become so controversial. Um, so to the far left uh, group here, and these are supposed to be read as narrative, you have this group of women, um, they're always exaggerated, stereo, uh, stereotyped features following what was known as the sort of negroid uh, look of, of 19th century of, uh, of these antebellum figures. Um, so you have Walker playing on the here, you know, sexualized stereotypes and other, uh, other facial features, other uh, body types that play up the stereotypes of both slaves and masters uh, in the antebellum South. Um, so you see here the example of uh, of three, four different uh, three, four different women suckling uh, on each other's uh, suckling on each other's breasts. Um, you see the sort of tied knobs, the elongated uh, lips. Um, so you can see the kind of draftsmanship even in what Kara Walker is doing, where she's trying to draw attention uh, and drawing out those uh, drawing out those sort of stereotypical uh, features. Um, you see here uh, from the center uh, two white figures, the man on the left with one leg who has a sword impaled on the child on the ground while this other uh, child seems to be grabbing onto a corn stalk while, while growing out of the, the man's anus. Uh, on the right, you have a newborn uh, a newborn child, umbilical cord still intact, who seems to be getting... Um, we can call it born, uh, I suppose, out of this uh, man's anus, or, or you, you could say shit out of it. Um, and I think that that leads uh, with, with the image itself. Um, you see the young child uh, to, to the left of the image who's framing the image of the woman with the axe. Uh, and you see the little boy um, shitting uh, across uh, and sort of framing the figure as they plod through this, as they plod through this scene. Um, that image here, you see those piles of dung on the bottom right here uh, of this woman with an axe with uh, with um, presumably slave children uh, around her. Because of the framing of this image, it's thought that the title referencing Eva and Uncle Uncle Tom's Cabin, um, this is the sort of uh, white heroine of uh, of Uncle Tom's Cabin, which uh, I'm sure you're you're familiar with that as kind of a, a black passivity in the in the face of racism and the history of Uncle Tom coming through all of these images. Um, and so there's obviously a, a lot to talk about here, um, but uh, I think that the silhouette form leans itself into this uh, sort of criticism of racism or criticism of slavery, even if it's not what we would call subversion, right? I think in the past we, we would have um, sort of seen, uh, and even in the artists we talked about, we, we would talk about subverting stereotypes. Um, but here we have them being sort of played up and maybe even being celebrated. And this is something that Kara Walker was attacked for by, uh, by, a, number of, uh, by a number of black artists who were um, just outraged at what they saw Kara Walker doing. Uh, in particular, the artist who you're familiar with already, Betty Saar, um, who we might see these these uh, works in conjunction. Think back to her her um, the stereotype object of using the Aunt Jemima, liberation of Aunt Jemima. Uh, but Betty Sarr sees a Kara Walker exhibit in San Francisco and writes a, a extraordinarily pointed letter to over two hundred writers, artists, and politicians. Um, 
really decrying the work of Walker, uh, saying, I'm writing you seeking your help to spread awareness about the negative images produced by the young African-American artist Kara Walker. Are African-Americans being betrayed under the guise of art? And then this threat, these Im images may be in your city next. So here the sense of African-Americans, and you can go back to the uh, the Kara Walker quote, where she kind of says, black people, commonly African-Americans, I think this is kind of a criticism of people of, uh, of Betty Sarr's generation. Um, but you hear, see, see and hear a, a black artist saying that this work, uh, is this betraying African-Americans under the guise of art, right? Is this, in fact, just celebrating uh, what, what we're looking at? Um, and uh, I might leave it to you to, to kind of debate and, and talk about that, because I do think there's a way of thinking about um, how these might be, if not celebratory, at least um, sort of embracing the stereotype in a different way. But thinking back to the role of the silhouette, how these private images from the absent figures, uh, private images stand in for absent figures, I would ask you all, what do you think these are standing in for? Uh, of course, they're standing in for a narrative. Um, you know, you, you can read this left to right and, and get this grand allegorical tableau of Eva and heaven. But I think you also get a dialogue uh, with history. And you get in, in Walker's comment on the script that dictates the life or, or the script that is followed. Um, you know, that's a very phenomenal thing to say uh, that, that speaks to the sort of pre-existing imposition uh, on black subjects that, uh, that requires and, and uh, again, um, imposes a kind of possibility, a way of being in advance. Um, but that's also something that's decoding the black subject from, that, from the outside. And here, even with the silhouette, right, you do have a kind of what, uh, what Darby English, uh, the scholar I mentioned last week who wrote 1971, calls the race leveling function. Um, that these figures are all black, right? That doesn't mean they're frozen in racial blackness. As I mentioned, these, they're not all, all racially black, but you do have an abstraction of identity through the use of the silhouette, an abstraction of bodies of individuals. Um, and that abstraction might just not be an abstraction, but in fact a distortion, a purposeful distortion of history, a purposeful distortion uh, and misremembering of what slavery was or what it looks like three generations removed from that. Uh, Walker points out in other quotations of her three generation separation from slavery, whereas Saar in the earlier generation had uh, perhaps a more direct connection. Um, so what, what and how can we think about that generational divide? And what does that say about um, the distance that's created uh, both through image making, the distance from slavery, and the distance that history uh, and image production continues to create. So I think there's a, a ton to talk about in the work of Walker. Um, I think you could go into this at, at length in discussion boards or, uh, or in class on Friday. Uh, but I think those are all really important questions to consider. And I do think they're all prompted by this return to the 19th century silhouette, by that appropriation, if you want, of the 19th century silhouette into this kind of radical, uh, critical, contemporary form.